Good evening, everybody. This is English Tips, and I am Glenda. Today, I'm going to answer the question, where is stress in English words? This is a very important question asked by my students repeatedly every time they see a new word that has more than two syllables and they don't know which one is emphasized. And uh, first of all, we need to see what is stress in English. Well, this is going to refer to the particular amount of volume that we give to a sound, a syllable, or a word within a sentence that is going to give it a particular meaning. Okay? And why is this important? Well, normally when you have two syllables, one of them has um, a weak sound and the other one, of course, is going to be stronger. If we emphasize the wrong syllable, we might be changing the meaning of the word completely. One of the most typical mistakes is, for example, if I say something like, I really like the desert, and people will be confused about what I'm talking about. Are you talking about a trip? Did you go to the Sahara Desert? And I'll have to say something like, no, no, I'm talking about the cake, it was amazing. So I didn't really mean the dry place in, in Sahara, right? What I was describing was the cake, the cupcake. But I should have said dessert. And instead of that, I said desert. So obviously there was miscommunication. So tip number one is focusing on a list of words that change meaning or grammatical category depending on where we place the stress. For example, we have record versus record or conduct versus conduct. What kind of words are the first two? You can see. And then record and conduct are verbs. Let's see more pairs like this. So we have addict and addict. Protest versus protest. Progress, progress. Permit, permit. Increase, increase. Object, object. As you can see, the syllable that is in blue is the one that is more, uh, more stressed. And I'm going to ask you to stop the video, go back, listen and repeat the words so that you can learn them. Now you're going to listen to some sentences and uh, you need to decide what's the word that comes first. Is it the noun or the verb? And the first one is, I object, your honor, this object is no evidence material. Again, I object, Your Honor. This object is no evidence material. What's the answer? Well, I object is, of course, the verb, and this object is the noun. You can identify this because of the word order as well. Let's see another example. The suspect seems to be nervous. I suspect he's hiding something. Again, the suspect seems to be nervous. I suspect he's hiding something. What did I say first? Let's check. So, the suspect is the noun that was first and I suspect was the verb that came afterwards. We still have one more and it says the protest was very peaceful to protest when you disagree is a civil right again the protest was very peaceful to protest when you disagree is a civil right and let's see the answer first the noun the protest and to protest is the verb. Very well. Now we have some sentences where you need to locate the exact stress in the underlined words. I'm going to repeat every sentence twice. 
So the first one is my boss was content with my presentation's content. My boss was content with my presentation's content. Number two. This special permit will permit you to re-enter the country. This special permit will permit you to re-enter the country. And number three. What record would you like me to record? What record would you like me to record? Now, as usual, if you need to listen again, stop the video, go back, and we'll check the answers in a second. Let's check. So, in the first sentence, my boss was content. Content is working as an adjective here, and content as a noun. In number two, the special permit, noun, permit, verb. And three, record, noun, and to record, verb. How did you do? Was it easy? I hope so. Well, that was the first tip, and you had some practice because um, it was a little bit more difficult, but uh, for tips number two and three, you just need to pay attention to these particular examples and try to relate them to words from the future. The second tip is that most words uh, that have two syllables in English are stressed in the first one. Words such as brother, window, that are very common and um, all of those words coming from a Germanic um, root are going to be following this rule. There are other words like bus stop or bathroom, uh, bedroom, all of these words that are compound nouns, either if you spell them um, separately or not, they are going to be stressed in the first syllable. So you just need to memorize this. Let's see tip number three now. And this applies to um, these groups of words that are stressed in the second syllable all the time. The first group is uh, compound nouns, excuse me, compound verbs like overlook, outrun, outdo. And compound verbs are those verbs that are um, uh, consistent on preposition plus a verb and since the verb is the most important information we emphasize that. The second group is reflex pronouns and they are always going to be stressed in the self or selves syllable like myself, ourselves, etc. Finally, numbers ending in teen like 13, 15, etc. Alright, so this Second and third um, tips are really easy and I hope that they have been very useful. Thanks for taking your time for this tutorial and remember that our saying here at English Tips is that you should never stop learning because we can always improve our pronunciation especially. This is what my channel looks like and I'm going to be uploading tutorials every week so I really hope that you can share and continue improving. Bye!